Hello, thank you for taking time to watch the 2022-2023 outreach presentation for the Sacramento Valley Water Quality Coalition. By watching this short video, you will fulfill your annual outreach requirement as a member of the coalition. During this presentation, we will review what the Irrigated Lands Regulatory Program is and the framework of the coalition. We'll also spend some time looking at surface water monitoring results from the past year, and I'll share some really great news regarding the coalition's monitoring schedule. Of course, we will also review member requirements for the coming year, and we'll take a look at how the coalition works with the Regional Water Quality Control Board to ensure that landowners are meeting those requirements. In the end, if you have any questions, there will be information about who to contact. We will soon be approaching the 20th year since the Irrigated Lands Regulatory Program was first adopted. The program began to address discharge from irrigated agriculture in California, and its formation was authorized under the California Water Code. The mechanisms used are called Waste Discharge Requirements, or WDRs. You may also hear these referred to as general orders or simply orders. The ILRP is mandated by the State Water Resources Control Board and management of the program is divided up into regions. The Sacramento Valley is in Region 5. In Region 5, the Central Valley region, there are 14 total coalitions and 9 WDRs. These cover 7 million acres or about 75% of California's irrigated land. Property needs to be enrolled in the program if it is commercial and irrigated and is not already covered under a separate order, such as the dairy program or rice program. To get coverage, you have two options. You can obtain coverage as an individual or join a coalition. To help growers in the Sacramento Valley comply with the WDR, the Sacramento Valley Water Quality Coalition was first formed in 2004. The coalition has over 1.1 million irrigated acres and 7,300 members. It is managed by the Northern California Water Association, who is the recognized party responsible for compliance in the eyes of the regional board. The coalition is administered by 12 subwatershed groups. The coalition helps members with compliance, reporting, coordinating surface water and groundwater quality monitoring, and compiling other reports required by the WDR. The coordination of surface water quality monitoring by the coalition is one of the biggest advantages of being a coalition member. And we have some really fantastic news to share about this. In February of 2022, the Regional Water Board approved the coalition's request to change the monitoring schedule from a four-year cycle of assessment, assessment, core, core, to a three-year cycle of assessment, core, core. And as a reminder, during assessment years, a larger array of analytes are sampled for and because of this, assessment year costs are usually much higher than core year costs. So with the elimination of the second assessment year, the coalition will see significant cost savings in surface water monitoring for all future years. This request was justified and approved based on historic surface water quality data and member data from annual reports. It is a huge win for coalition members both in the form of a cost reduction and in the form of a recognition of the 15 year history that Sacramento Valley growers and farmers have of protecting water quality. Now let's look back at the past monitoring year, which ended on September 30th, 2022. This was the last assessment year until 2025. During the monitoring year, two management plans were completed one in the Butte Yuba Sutter subwatershed and one in the Dixon Solano subwatershed. And unfortunately, one new management plan was triggered. This was in the Butte Yuba Sutter subwatershed. This table shows results from the past year. 
you can see that overall exceedance rates remain low in the coalition. There was one exceedance of the trace metal copper, three exceedances of nutrients, and no exceedances of non-pyrethroid pesticides. But pyrethroids continue to be a problem and they were found to cause exceedances of the pyrethroid pesticide prohibition in eight water column samples and were considered to cause or contribute to the toxicity of the test organism Hyalella azteca in three of eight sediment samples. The coalition first began monitoring for pyrethroids in 2018, but only in drainages where pesticide use data showed pyrethroids were being used. This table shows total results since January 2018, and the column on the far right shows total exceedance rates. You can see that pyrethroids are not only commonly detected, but commonly trigger exceedances. In fact, of the coalition's five active management plans, four are related to pyrethroids. Management plans, as you know, are triggered by two or more exceedances of the same constituent at the same site within a three-year period. Once a management plan is in place, additional monitoring and outreach is required in the management plan area. Management plans are completed through a combination of monitoring results and management practice documentation. A minimum of three years without any additional exceedances must pass before a management plan becomes eligible for completion. And overall, coalition members have had great success in completing management plans, and this can be seen in this graph. On the left are the number of active management plans during that year, and as they were completed, they moved to the right. So for example, in 2022, the coalition has five active management plans. However, 46 management plans have been completed since 2010. We are now into the 2022-2023 monitoring year, which began on October 1st, 2022. This is a core monitoring year for the valley floor areas and no monitoring will take place in subwatersheds with the reduced monitoring option. These reductions in monitoring have resulted in the decrease of the surface water budget of over $345,000 from the 2021-22 budget. Yet, surface water monitoring will still take place in a majority of the subwatershed and that is why it is critically important to continue to implement best management practices on farm. This is especially important when it comes to pyrethroid pesticides, which, as you may recall, have an extremely low exceedance threshold. As we continue into this monitoring year, this is the main message that we would like members to keep in mind. The most effective way to keep costs down is to complete existing management plans and avoid triggering new ones. We are now going to move on and speak about requirements that coalition members should keep in mind in the coming year. Member requirements are quite similar to requirements of the previous year. Members must participate in one annual outreach event and by watching this video, you are meeting that requirement. Members must pay their annual fees and dues. And of course, members must complete their annual reporting on time. This includes the INMP worksheet and summary report. And as a reminder, the worksheet stays on farm and the summary report is turned into the coalition. The farm evaluation plan is due every five years with the next one due in 2026. And where applicable, members must complete a sediment and erosion control plan and a management practice implementation report. Your subwatershed will let you know if your property falls in an area with these requirements. And lastly, a new requirement, but hopefully not unfamiliar to you, 
There's the on-farm active drinking water well monitoring requirement. Annual fees and dues, as well as billing cycles, are determined by each individual subwatershed, and they are based on a variety of factors. The fees that you pay to your subwatershed are used to fund a variety of ILRP elements, including the State Water Quality Oversight Fee, Coalition Programmatic Costs, as well as local administrative costs. The State Water Quality Fee, which is set by the State Board and paid directly to the Regional Board, will increase for 2022-2023. It will be $1.09 per irrigated acre for irrigated pasture with no external nitrogen inputs, and $1.35 per irrigated acre for all other crops. Another huge development of 2022 is that the INMP Grower Self-Certification Training is now available 100% online. After completing the training and passing the online exam, growers will become eligible to self-certify their INMP worksheet. The certification requirement of the worksheet applies to members who have fields in high vulnerability areas for nitrogen or who have been identified as outliers, and self-certification is one option to meet that requirement. To access the training, please visit the link in green at svwqc.org. We would also like to remind members that the first sampling event for the on-farm active drinking water well monitoring program must be completed before January 1st, 2023. This applies to enrolled parcels with wells that are actively used for drinking or cooking. As a reminder, this program was mandated by the State Water Board for the whole Central Valley and it began in the Sacramento Valley in 2022. An ELAP certified lab must be used to sample your well. If you believe you're exempt from this requirement or would like more information, please contact Phil Carter with the Central Valley Regional Water Quality Control Board. His phone number and email can be found in yellow text here. For the past few minutes, we have been talking about the requirements of landowners to maintain compliance with the ILRP. And while a majority of landowners are diligent in meeting those requirements, there are a subset who do not. Here at the Coalition, we understand the need for fairness for those who are working hard to maintain good standing. And while the Coalition is not the regulatory agency, the WDR does require that the Coalition submit names of members out of compliance. This includes members who fail to report on time and members who are dropped for non-payment or non-responsiveness. The Regional Board also works to identify landowners who are not enrolled, and the Coalition's primary role in that process is simply to ensure that no enrolled members are on the list. The Regional Board performs what is called progressive enforcement. Displayed here are enforcement pyramids, and they outline the enforcement steps that the Regional Board takes. The process for late reporters and dropped members begins with the coalition submitting the names of landowners in those categories. This is required by the WDR. The landowners then enter the enforcement pyramid at the bottom. Between each level is a waiting period, and landowners are given an opportunity to respond and either report, re-enroll, enroll, or notify the Regional Board of Exemption status. If the landowner does not respond, they move on up to the next level of enforcement. Now, the goal of these efforts is not to frighten landowners or collect the fines, but it is to get landowners compliant and receive the data. If you are ever a recipient of one of these types of letters, please respond immediately to either the Regional Board or the Coalition. Both of their contact information will be in the letter. Doing so will help you avoid being escalated to the next level. However, if you are already a member, 
the best way to avoid enforcement from the regional board is to pay your dues and complete reporting on time. Now at this point, it is worth reminding you that the coalition is not the regulatory agency. We are here to help you comply with a state mandated program. We only provide information to the regional board that is required in the WDR. And this includes the lists of non-reporters and dropped members. The ILRP was mandated by the state water board. It is managed by the regional water board and the coalition is the go-between for you, the member, and the regulatory agency. However, again, the coalition is not the regulator. This presentation covered a lot of different topics, and so if you have any questions about anything that was presented today or anything else related to the ILRP, here's a list of resources. Of course, you may also contact your subwatershed representative at any time or Bruce Haudeschelt, the Director of Water Quality for the Northern California Water Association. Thank you so much for watching this video. And with that, you have completed your outreach requirement as a member of the Sacramento Valley Water Quality Coalition.